Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris and this is Taylor Welding. In this video, we're going to cover how to stick weld without sticking your rod. Well, that's your buddy saying, oh, it looks like Indians went by or something funny like that. I can't remember that. I always hated that. People come by and go, Ooh, you know, and your rod was stuck and you're trying to get undone. Well, we're gonna cover all that. I'm about to give you 24 years or maybe more of welding my whole life of information in this short video. I'm gonna try to keep it about 10 minutes, but there is some solid info here, okay? This is gonna be the only video you need to watch when it comes to getting your rod stuck or unstuck or how it happens, why it happens, and what we can do to prevent it. Hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell if you like this kind of content. Now, I am gonna be showing you this gnarly weld. Flick it, don't stick it. Come back. It's a bunch of restarts because that's what I want you guys to do. If you're struggling with this, I want you to restart, 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 restart. Just, just get, get that behind you. I was teaching a guy the other day how to weld. Michael, he's gonna be learning how to weld. Um, he can weld already a little bit, right? Mostly Correct. with me. Meg. Right? Meg. Okay. Well, he's interested in learning stick welding and he's spent more time stuck than welding. That's part of it. Now we are welding with 532 6010s that have mold growing on them and rust on the end. That's what most people are going to use in their backyard. That's, this is part of it. Fresh rods will help. Uh, there is no uh, bad welding machine though. If you're using an old tombstone that goes gink, 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 good luck. I, I can't even make a weld look good with that thing. And you sure can't combine the two bad rods with a bad welding machine. So, First thing, I got my notes right here because I can't remember anything. What's your heat set on? If you're welding too cold, it's not going to work. It, the weld's not going to look good. You're going to have a heck of a time getting started. If you're welding too hot, it's going to be easier to get started, but your weld's not going to look good. So get there in the middle. And a lot of people are thinking right now, well, what's the amps? What number do I need to run that right on? I can't tell you. I don't know. I, my machine has no readouts. I, I, it's Like I said before, weld with it too cold and then weld with it too hot and put it in the middle and then adjust from there. Heat, think that, think that through. How many times have you stuck your rod already? Have you seen people, let me put it in the stand. Have you seen people that my old worn out stinger still works pretty good though they will weld and stick and they do, they do like this and they weld and stick and they try to pull it off well that's going to damage the end of your rod here's a quick tip that will help you with that as soon as soon if you if you got a fresh rod and you're going and you go down to that's what a lot of, I've noticed a lot of people do. I tell them to, to flick it, but don't stick it. They flick it, they get it going, then they go, and they stick it. Well, as soon as that happens, pow, break it off. I'm serious. As soon as you feel it almost get stuck, and you know it's stuck, break it fast. Pop, pop. The longer this rod stays stuck, the hotter it gets, the more rod damage is going to happen. I'm going to show you some close-ups of what happens of some of the rod butts that were left over from when I was uh, helping the man weld. But that's a, a good one. As soon as you get stuck, break it off there. Get it done. Don't wait and do like this. Oh, it's stuck. Nah, nah, nah. You know, or my, well, actually, that would be okay. A, a big wide like that. Uh, like this. Most people do like that. Oh, it's stuck. No. Boom. Boom, rip it off there, boom, boom, okay? Now, after you got stuck, look at the tip. If this flux is ripped off, look at this old rod and show you. I got two, I got two. If that flux, it's like that. If it's 
bare metal. Let's see, it's chipping off there. You can, it's not too bad. You could burn this off. You could get on the edge of some plate, which this is bent because in the previous video I was showing people how you can tell when they're bad rods. Get on the edge of some plate, you can see something and just try to arc off on the edge and long arc it till it gets into the good metal. Okay, and then you can start again. Now, when you, see this, this rod's burnt down further and there's more rod damage. You see how far black that is down there? Well, that's, these are old rods, so it's worse. But all that is real brittle. It's, it's, it just wants to fall off there. See, not a lot holding it on. So just, I'm not telling you to throw your rods away. You could probably burn this down, burn that off too. But the point is just because the flux is on there doesn't mean it's good. If it's burn up, they're old and they're, they're, they're burn up, you know, that's part of welding old rods. Now, um, and I can do this again. If your rods are old, if they're new, right there that flux should pop as soon as you start flexing it. If they're old, it'll just bend around and, and not come off. It's, it's a good way to know, you know, if they're old or not. 718, that, that doesn't work on. The flux is pretty much always brittle. It's even more brittle if you put them in an oven. So that should help somebody. Next, what is your stinger like? Do you have a subpar stinger? To quote a good buddy of mine, is your stinger worth two good squirts of dog pee? <laughs> that was Slick Rick. Well, 7018, better than anybody I've seen. And he didn't start welding until he was 50. Isn't that cool? Get a good stinger. Uh, this is the stubby rod saver. They didn't make them anymore. Uh, this is a really old one I have. It really holds on to the rod. If you're, if you're welding with a rod, a, a stinger, and you can't do that, bend that rod around, that's gonna help you. That is going to help you, because you're gonna be able to, it's gonna help you be able to get under stuff. So keep that in mind when you get a rod stinger, uh, uh, rod, sorry, stubby rod saver, stinger, rod holder. If it's loose, if it's loose in your rod holder, it, it's really hard to get going, all right? So uh, good ground, good rod holder, stinger. Uh, the stubby rod saver, this is a new one. This is the brand new one. They just started making them. The only place you can get them is right here at Taylor Welding. The website will be up hopefully this week. They made a few improvements and knurled the handle. I mean, that dude is 400 amps, tiny, burn them down to nothing. It's gonna save you money too. That'll be up, just stay tuned. We're almost there, but get a good rod holder. Are you comfortable? I see a lot of people, man, they're, get a new rod here. They're, not, see, I automatically, see how I did that automatically? They're not doing that. They're, they're, they're not doing anything. They're just like, okay, weld. I'm going to weld now. Scratch like a match and weld. You got to get comfortable, man. You got to get, get down in there. Start off in a bind. Start off back here. Like, all right, that's, but that's, I mean, I'm not in a bind, but I'm close. And then you can flick, flick, don't stick, flick it long arc, come back and start welding. And then as you weld, because you're going to have to feed the rod, you're going to be getting into comfort, out of the bind into comfort. Okay, so start off up here and then, and then you're just like, oh, okay. Now some people like to hold the rod, especially if it's a 332 or something like that. I do it all the time. And one guy, pool cue, he called it a pool cue. You hold it like this, you know, hold it like this. 
Here's the problem with holding it too much. Well, one thing, you're going to burn your fingers up. The other thing is, if you hold it too much, you, you've got to find a way to get your hand away. You know, you've got a glove on it, so there's no problem with holding it, but hold it as little as possible. Just hold it enough to steady it. That way, when you, when you scratch off and start long arcing and you start welding, you can, you can slowly you know, ease into two hands because you, you really want two hands on this stinger. You want to be pro everything in your favor. Remember, you, you want to be comfortable. You want to be holding on to everything just tight as you can, but not, I said tight, not white knuckle tight. I meant comfort as still as you can get that rod. That's how you can completely manipulate that puddle, puddle any way you want to. You're going to be able to scratch, come back like a surgeon and do whatever you want. If you're not propped up and you're, you're well on one hand, wind, just anything can throw you off. And one little thing, you've got a loose wrinkle or some undercut or some porosity or whatever. Keep it tight. I meant the movement, not you got to relax. Most people I try to teach how to weld, they're, they're like, relax, but keep it tight. Flick, don't stick. Now, I think this is the point where I should show you several restarts, one after the other. I'm not taking this to the fair. I mean, this is a bunch of restarts with old rods, but this is for your benefit, not to make me look good. Okay, this is not my prettiest weld, okay? So I'm gonna roll some, a clip of what I did to try to show you guys. I just want to put this in the front of the video. I think it's gonna help some people. So hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell. Roll it. Okay, we're gonna use two hands. We're gonna steady our arm, and we're gonna flick it. That's it, you're gonna flick. I'm just, I'm just, you can do this a couple times. I'm welding now, okay? We're going forward, we're burning the rust off, and we're coming back. And I'm going to stop. And we're going to flick, 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 come back. But when you flick, you're not stopping. You're not pulling all the way away from the metal. Flick, keep it going. Come back real slow. And then start welding. Once you figure that out, it, it'll be really easy for you. No, I don't want to stop. It's going so good, but I'm going to. For the sake of the video, we got to stop and start a bunch of times because that's what I want you to do. Flick, flick, flick. Go forward. We're long off and around, not doing anything. Okay, now we're welding. Alright, we're gonna stop, start again, flick it, long off, come back. Are we good? Are you you see are you smelling what I'm stepping in? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? We're gonna do it one more time. We're gonna flick right there, right at the end of your weld. You're gonna go forward and come back. Keep going. Do it one more time. Flick it, don't stick it. Come back. And wait. All right. There is one more thing I should have talked about. I always forget something. 7018. We're talking about 6010, which is a cellulose rod. 7018 is low hydrogen rod. Uh, the flux is different. And what 7018 likes to do is it likes to burn, the metal likes to burn into the flux and it'll leave like a, I don't know what you'd call it. The flux is like poking out over the metal. Instead of smacking it on the pipe, if you smack it on the pipe and try to restart it, it pushes that flux back and it'll break off up here. Best thing to do is take your glove and pinch it forward and it'll be just like a new one. And then you can start off just like it's a new rod. Y'all have an awesome day. Later. So a lot of times when you go to get started, it's, it's 
you can't because it's it, the flux is touching but not the rod. So the only thing I would do there, a lot of people get a file and do like that, but sometimes people use a file and, and it flakes the side of the rod off. And Clean up the end of your electrode like that. It's not too big of a deal. Now that was a 7018 that had been glazed over. It, it puts a little bit of flux on the outside of the rod and it, he was hitting it with a with a file, but you just barely want to touch it. Just show that metal up. If you scrub it, it's going to pop flux off the, the side. So remember that. And most of the time, guys, most of the time, if you'll just pop it, it'll break that flux off and then you can flick it and don't stick it. Have an awesome, awesome day. I'll see you in the next one later.